Hi everyone, today we'll be going over the lac operon and catabolite repression. An operon is a group of functionally related genes that are grouped together on DNA and are under the control of one promoter. In an operon, the genes are transcribed as one single long mRNA transcript. The mRNA is then translated onto the different proteins encoded by the genes. This method allows bacteria to regulate gene products for a specific function with just one set of transcription factors. For example, all the genes required for turning a purple sparkly color are grouped together on the DNA. So when the bacteria needs to be sparkly purple, it only needs to transcribe that one region of DNA and it will get all the proteins needed. Using operons allows bacteria to respond very quickly to their environment because the protein synthesis process is shorter thanks to the grouping. Only one promoter needs to be activated to get all the gene products needed for a function. The first part of the operon is the promoter region. It's a stretch of DNA that binds to RNA polymerase. If RNA polymerase binds, then the genes in the operon will be transcribed. If RNA polymerase can't bind, then the genes will not be transcribed. And then the next part is the operator. This is where the repressor protein, which acts as an off switch, binds. If the operator is bound to a repressor, RNA polymerase will be unable to bind to the promoter sequence, and the genes will not be transcribed. In this state, the operon is considered to be off. However, if no repressor is bound to the operator, then RNA polymerase can bind to the promoter, and the genes will be transcribed. In this state, the operon is said to be on. The structural genes are transcribed when the operon is on. They're the end goal. Some operons have a regulator, which is a stretch of DNA that codes for the repressor protein. Most regulators are not under the control of the operon. In fact, regulators tend to be upstream or downstream of the promoter it affects. The regulator is regulated by another process. For most bacteria, glucose is the preferred carbon source. However, when glucose is unavailable, bacteria must turn to other sources. Lactose is a disaccharide containing a glucose and a galactose. If a bacterium has a lac operon, it will be able to break down lactose into its component parts to be used as a carbon source. The structural genes in the lac operon are lac Z, lac Y, and lac A. Lac Z encodes beta galactosidase, which is an enzyme that cleaves the lactose into glucose and galactose. Lac Y encodes beta galactose permease, or lactose permease, which is a transmembrane protein that pumps lactose into the cell using a proton gradient. Lac A encodes beta galactose transacetylase, which is an enzyme that transfers an acetyl group from acetyl CoA to galactose. Together, these genes break down lactose into a usable carbon source. The repressor protein is encoded by lac I, which is found just upstream of the lac operon. The lac operon is an inducible operon, meaning that the operon is normally in the off state, but can be turned on. When there is no lactose in the environment, the operon is off. This is because the cell does not want to waste energy making proteins that aren't currently needed. Because there is no lactose in the environment, the proteins encoded by the lac operon are not needed. The repressor protein, encoded by lac I, is bound to the operator which prevents RNA polymerase from transcribing the genes. When lactose is present in the environment, the lac operon is induced or turned on. Lactose binds to the repressor protein, which changes the protein shape. The operator binding site of the protein is no longer functional, so the repressor protein falls off the DNA. This allows RNA polymerase to bind to the promoter, and the structural genes LACZ, LACY, and LACA are transcribed as one mRNA transcript. The CAP protein facilitates RNA polymerase binding, which increases the rate of transcription. After the mRNA transcript has been made, it will bind to a ribosome for translation. The proteins needed for lactose catabolism will be made, and the bacterium will be able to break down the lactose that is now present in its environment.
The lac operon is an example of catabolite repression. Remember that catabolism is the breakdown of large molecules into smaller molecules. I like to think that a cat will break things, and a cat sounds like catabolic. The lac operon codes for proteins that have catabolic properties. They break down lactose, a disaccharide, into glucose and galactose, monosaccharides. Therefore, the lac operon is under catabolite repression, because when the operon is in the off state, the catabolite process of breaking down lactose is inhibited. Catabolite repression of the lac operon is under the control of enzyme 2A. This protein is activated by glucose, which is the preferred carbon source for bacteria. When glucose is available, enzyme 2A inhibits lactose permease, which reduces the amount of lactose that can enter the cell. With no lactose in the cell, the repressor protein can remain bound to the operator, and the operon will be off. The bacterium is forced to use glucose as a carbon source, which is more efficient because it does not have to break a disaccharide to obtain the sugar. Therefore, enzyme 2A is responsible for the catabolite repression of the lac operon.